don't use the CRC Lectra Clean on your leatherette. It will probably eat it. Here you can see we've got lumps and bumps, these light patches, a piece, bits of corrosion. They'll correspond with some of those pits on the back of the camera back, no doubt. You want those lumps and bumps off here. I'm just using the tip of my scalpel and I'm scraping. I'm not digging into it. I'm just flicking that rubbish off. Some of these bumps will fall where there were rivets on the back cover. And that's where you've got dis dissimilar metals and you have uh, salts or something else creating a bit of an electrolyte with some moisture. And that just causes the, the metal to corrode. And of course the one that's hot is it highest on the activity scale is the one that disappears. I don't know. The chemists among you will know all about that. It's a wee while since I sat down in a chemistry class. Oops. That was being a bit clumsy. I just hit that and that leatherette's cracked at that point. So I've got to be extra careful. Cracks on edges are not much fun to deal with because it's hard to get the leatherette to fold neatly around the corner. If it's got a crack right on an edge where it doesn't want to fold, it just tends to open up the crack. However, We'll deal with that when we get to it. Now, I've got rid of the lumps of corrosion. All I'm doing now is scraping this to make sure I take away any lumps of adhesive that are on the back of the leatherette. They should be relatively flat and relatively smooth. That's so that they'll stick down smoothly to the camera back. It's not unusual for there to be a bit of a build-up of adhesive towards the edge. So that's that. You can see here the lumps and bumps that show through. These are the Zeiss bumps and most of those Zeiss bumps will line up with something here. This one, this one, here. This is over this patch of corrosion. We're seeing this. This big bump here is over that patch of corrosion. Here the bumps line up over that patch of corrosion. So that's where how why you get Zeiss bumps. It's a build-up. It's where that those that corrosion patches they it expands and of course as it expands it pushes up the leatherette and as it pushes up the leatherette if the leatherette is well stuck it means that that's concentrated over a very small area and the leatherette stretches until it until it gives way in some cases, you get severe Zeiss bumps, you'll see that they're actually cracked where the leatherette has been stretched beyond its yield point. Okay, so these are the two panels from the front. These are worse um, because they've been off and on multiple times. And I will have to scrape away at these and try and get them as smooth as I can. You can see I'm keeping my finger down firmly on the paper right next to where I'm working. That's to keep the leatherette down firmly and hopefully prevent it from tearing away. 
Yeah, certainly a selection of adhesives here. That's something hard brown adhesive there. And there will probably be adhesives on top of other adhesives. So it's be very careful when you're working near the edge here, near that corner, because obviously there's not much material there. It will tear away very easily, which doesn't mean the leatherette's a complete loss. You can glue things back in pretty much invisibly, but it's better not to happen. So be very cautious working around corners. And when you've got lumps and bumps, you can, it'll often chip away with the tip of your scalpel, taking minute chips of it, and it'll just break away until it's all gone. If you try and scrape it all off in one lump, it'll fail. You'll just end up tearing your leatherette. Where the adhesive is in a thick patch like this, of course, it means that the leatherette is not flexible. That makes it very inflexible. Which is fine if it's on a flat panel and the leatherette's flat, it'll be good. But if it's got a curve to it, these, these edges here are, are curved up a bit. It means they weren't particularly well stuck down. They've curled up. If there was plenty of adhesive on them and they were never pushed down firmly, that curve, that's pretty much set there. It's not going to go away. We're stuck with that. You can see a few zeiss bumps on the front here. That's where those patches of corrosion were visible here. If the leatherettes are relatively pliable, those zeiss bumps will largely disappear as you glue these back down and you just press those points back down to make sure they're fixed firmly. And, and you should be good. I'm just going to clean that leatherette with a bit of naphtha now. You don't really want to use anything more active than that, more aggressive than naphtha. I'm cleaning the glue side of it, the side that goes to the camera body, and this is to remove any grease, um, we're probably not going to remove any adhesive with this, but any greases or oils, including finger oils from me handling it, and any dust, we just want to, as clean a surface as we can get, which doesn't look very inspiring, but it's better than what we started with. And most importantly, it's free from lumps and bumps. The front surface of the leatherette, you can probably see it's a bit grimy down here. That's where it's gathered up uh, dirt and grease over time. I'm just going to wipe that with a bit of naphtha. See if that'll lift off. You can see it did. Don't go mad wiping the front of the leatherettes with naphtha. It may easily affect the surface. These leatherettes are pretty dry looking anyway. But if they'd been quite nice and fresh and glossy looking, you certainly wouldn't want to wipe them with naphtha because you'd probably do more harm than good. Okay, so there's, there's our piece of leatherette from the front. You can see it's got quite a pronounced line down it. And whether that means that when someone attempted to service the camera they folded the leatherette back far enough to get to the screws and that's as far as they went or whether that's just a natural formation because the front plate and the camera body were not sitting at quite the same level which is 
you know, quite common too, and it's, I wouldn't, that's not a fault, that's a feature. I don't know. So I'll deal with this other leatherette, and at that stage I will come back. At the moment this video camera is telling me its battery is very, very tired. Normally I clean all the mechanical components in the ultrasonic cleaner. Of course, you may well not have an ultrasonic cleaner, so you're going to have to clean the parts by hand. So how would you go about doing it? Well, basically lots of cotton buds, lots of naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid. And you start at the beginning, and you start wiping everything down. What you're trying to do is remove any dirt, old grease, grease in particular, because grease will have dust embedded in it and the, that makes it less of a lubricant and more of a grinding paste. So all components, you can start anywhere you like on this. You may have your parts neatly sorted out. So as all the parts for a particular piece of the mechanism are all together. In which case, clean those pieces individually and put them back in their order so that you know where things go back. I don't, I just throw everything in a big mess. But that's the way I've always worked. So I'm just dealing here with the strap lugs. And the other piece I had there, that was the hold down plate for the cocking rack. This piece. There's the bush that goes under the rewind knob. And here's the bush for the rewind shaft. Now quite commonly that will be filled with dirty old grease and will have taken up an awful lot of uh, dust and grit. This is, this is not, this is quite clean. Now why is it quite clean? Well it's probably quite clean because someone serviced the camera before and by the looks of it they didn't bother to lubricate that afterwards. And so with no grease it hasn't uh, taken up any dust or grit. Of course I don't know how much work if any the camera would have done after it had been serviced because this one was a little bit weird. It um, didn't have any cord on the meter. Also the shutter doesn't work. Now the question is did the shutter work after it was serviced and put back together? Well, that's possible. It's possible that it worked fine at that stage and that something has ceased to work since. I've got my suspects as to why the shutter doesn't fire. But we'll investigate that and find out in due course. In the meantime, I just want to get all of these pieces cleaned. This is the lock lever, and the lock lever's job is to hold the film advance, stop the film advance lever from being able to be moved if the frame, if the film counter, the frame counter has reached number one. And the idea of that is to stop people reaching the end of the film and ripping the uh, holes, ripping the film up with the uh, sprocket wheel. And it would certainly achieve that, as long as people set the frame counter correctly when they loaded their film. If they didn't set the, film, the frame counter correctly, it would have no such useful effect. But once you're used to the idea of a retina camera locking the film advance when you reach frame number one, it's no longer any surprise at all and it's a feature, not a bug. Now this is the shutter, the shutter cocking rack and this is 
quite greasy and the grease is um, in fact there's two different lots of grease here there's a, a yellowy orange grease and there's some looks like a bit of graphite grease on there as well or something grey when you see multiple colours of grease on one component it really can only mean that someone at some stage instead of removing and cleaning the part and then lubricating it has simply added more grease now that might dilute the grinding paste a bit but it's not exactly good practice so components need to be cleaned and then lubricated not just add lubrication to the mess that's already there one of the advantages of cleaning something like this each piece individually is it forces you to look closely at the object concerned and if you're looking closely at the object concerned you may notice a defect with it that otherwise your eye would just skate over that you wouldn't see and here I'm just checking to make sure there's no rubbish jammed into the roots of the teeth and I'm looking at the form of the teeth and they're good the cocking racks on the 3S cameras are usually in good condition they are not as prone to failure as the racks on the 3C type cameras and there's a couple of reasons for that but one of them is that it's well supported at the, at the uh, gear on the top of the film advance there's a bush there which stops the rack from being able to push away and so keeps the gear firmly engaged this is the shaft for the sprocket the film sprocket for cleaning the teeth on a gear like this you can use a sharp end of a wooden toothpick like this you can use a stiff paintbrush it doesn't matter what you use just as long as you make sure that there's nothing embedded in the teeth you don't want to uh, have anything in there that's going to cause a lump or a bump when the uh, mechanism's trying to roll over it. This is the drum for the cord for the meter. It's unusually clean and of course it didn't have anything on it because um, no one had put the meter cord in place. Now how do we know that the meter cord didn't just simply break? Well if it broke, it's exceptionally unlikely that it would have broken the knots off both ends of the cord and so the cord would still be on the drum. Even if the cord had somehow managed to unwind itself from the drum, there's no easy way for the cord to find its way out of the camera unless it suddenly magically turned into a snake and wriggled out so that means that whoever had the camera apart didn't replace the cord whether they the cord was complete when they started their repair and it was broken by the time they got halfway through we'll never know it uh, as you could see by one of my attempt at cleaning the front rings on camera number two and failing miserably because I'd let the setting move while before while I was putting it back together, it's easy to end up with a damaged cord simply by not having things where they need to be.
this is the transfer shaft. It tra takes the action of the shutter cocking rack at the back of the camera and transfers it through the camera body to the shutter at the front. And this is a bit tricky because it's got this washer arrangement behind it. It means that it's not easy to get those teeth clear when you're cleaning it manually. It's really no problem at all in an ultrasonic cleaner. All that stuff just blasts out and disappears. But when you're cleaning things manually, it's not quite so easy to ensure that there's nothing stuck in the roots of the teeth. And of course, with the washer on the face of it, that makes it much more likely that there's, it creates a little pocket that rubbish could sit in. And that would mean that the cocking rack action would be, at the very least, it would not be smooth. This is the spring for the clutch. The clutch's job is to provide some controlled slippage between the take-up spool and the sprocket. Because what happens, because both of those components are driven. Now if there's no clutch there, it would mean that they're both being turned at the, the equivalent rate. And it would mean that as the film built up on the spool, as you wound more and more film through the camera, the diameter would be increasing. And as the diameter increased, it would pull through more film with each movement. So if the take-up spool is pulling the film through at, uh, let's say, rate number 10, and the sprocket is only pushing the film through at rate number 9, something's going to give. And what gives, of course, is that the film gets torn. And so that's why you need to have some controlled slippage between the two, which is this camera that's all on the take-up spool. And that's quite a, quite a normal arrangement. And it means that as the film is wound further on and you're building up more on the take-up spool, it starts to slip a bit so that the rate that the film moves through the camera is controlled entirely by the rotation of the sprocket which is convenient because there are holes in the film and the sprocket rotates a certain amount so only a certain length of film passes the film gate each time So you could probably sub, it's likely that if you only had a very short length of film in your camera, there'd be virtually no slip happening at all. If you had, if you were capable of doing so, and you had 50 frames of film wedged into your cassette, you'd probably find that there was an awful lot of slippage going on by the time you got to the end of the film. Now this drive dog, this is a latter type, it's just a plain flat piece of metal, tiny bevel on two opposing corners on its underside. I was just checking that to make sure that they were neat and tidy, they weren't showing any problems. This is the bracket that holds the arm for the rangefinder in place. This is the outer part of the clutch assembly. I haven't cleaned a camera manually like this for some time. I always use the ultrasonic cleaner, so some of this is surprising me because I haven't had to deal with problems like this. And here, there's a lot of rubbish embedded in that gear. Uh, it's grease, some of it's probably dry grease, and it'll be dust that it's picked up.
I put a little bit of grease on the meshing gear when I put the mechanism together. But you've got to start with clean components. So here, this is what you'll have to do if you haven't got an ultrasonic cleaner. You'll have to go through all the teeth and make sure that there's nothing embedded in them. There's certainly a wear pattern in the middle of those teeth that I can see where they've engaged with the wheel on the film advance. Or the the wheel and the uh, bush on the top of the film advance. Not sure which, but you certainly a, a prominent line there. Okay, well that's looking pretty good. If you had anything serious embedded in these the teeth here, what the problem that you'd get is you, you the film advance would be stiff. In one spot, you would get like a, it would like be going over a bump as it, the mechanism tried to get over the top of whatever lump of rubbish was in there. It wouldn't be a smooth piece of movement at all. All right, so now I'm getting just about down to the small stuff. Now let's do this film advance. This is a this would be a nuisance to do by hand. I've forgotten the joys of doing these by hand. I've used an ultrasonic cleaner for so long. Okay. So this spring was lubricated with grease, which is frequently, you will find cameras that have never been disassembled this far, and that grease is obviously going to be 60 years old. And it gets really sticky. Um, it'll have dust and other rubbish that it's picked up but it'll just be sticky that's its big problem and when you turn the film advance when you swing the lever sometimes the action is stiff sometimes the film advance lever doesn't want to return to the rest position and that is very often due to dried out thick waxy grease in here. So here I'm clearing all this with some naphtha. This is cleaning up quite well. I'm quite pleased with the look of it. These parts will not look as sparkly as they would do if they'd come from the cleaner. But uh, that's really just cosmetic. I'm making sure that I get all the important stuff off it. With the film advance shaft, one of the problems you sometimes get with these cameras is that the little cam on the base here sometimes is loose on the shaft. It's only riveted on. The shaft is squared off where it runs through there and then it's riveted over. If the camera's been dropped and its film advance lever's hit the ground, particularly if the camera's been dropped when the film advance lever was sticking out at an angle halfway through the stroke, what happens is it'll loosen up where it's riveted and then you end up with this plate wobbling and if this plate wobbles then you have a problem with the setting the point at which the film advance is released to allow you to wind on to the next shot which should happen in exactly the same instant that the shutter fires when things are good okay so all of these little bits they all need to be cleaned Doing screws in particular. Do them one or two or three at a time and I just roll them about on the paper like this with the cotton bud. And then sweep them to one side and then just get another one and do the same. And you can clean them up quite well. But be careful when you're doing that because if you just start sweeping them around they'll catch on the cotton bud and they'll flick off the table and before you know it they're gone. This is the pulley that we took off the meter cord arrangement. That was held on with a 
an unusual screw this one here I have rarely have any cause to remove those pulleys I only did it to show you how the mechanism worked otherwise um, so I, that's not a screw I would normally have to deal with have to remember to put that back here this is the bush out of the base of the plastic uh, film take up spool and here's our rewind button all of these pieces I'm just working on to make sure that I get rid of any grease and rubbish and things like this the little gear from the top of the film advance <coughs> excuse me need to make sure that there's nothing stuck in the teeth and that there are no teeth damaged on this in cameras where there's been a cocking rack has failed sometimes you might have a damaged tooth on this wheel if there's one damaged tooth that won't cause you any problems because being squared off you can turn it to a different position on the shaft and what it's usually fairly easy to rotate it so that the damaged tooth never comes in contact with the rack okay well you've seen how I clean this stuff up I'll carry on and get these fasteners cleaned up <coughs> 